Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna need a little bit of help making a body form for armor or sewing. Felicia is helping me with her method for making sewing dummies, and my friend Thorkules will be the model getting his torso wrapped up. The first layer is a little messy, just getting it to stick to the plastic bag can be challenging. But you'll want the plastic bag, it keeps your subject from getting soaking wet and getting really cold. Plastic cling wrap would work as well, but I didn't have any at the shop. Once the first layer is down, additional layers get easier. We took your friend Thorkules mm -hmm. and we covered him in gum tape. This is the same packing tape like when you get something shipped to you. It's also called butcher's tape. There's a couple different oh, okay. names for it, but it's a gum tape where it's paper with a gum surface on it. You have to get it wet for it to work. <laughs> and that was my job, getting the tape wet. First, we took a full roll of tape and cut it into strips. It's easier to manage while applying it. Felicia's job was covering his full torso. She has experience doing this. She's made a number of sewing dummies in the past and has one of herself made as well. So what we're building is a cast that we filled with expanding foam. Expanding foam expands, right. so I needed to make sure that I had enough structure and that we were forming it to his body. I was doing kind of a herringbone pattern. I made sure I did three solid coats. It looked like you're being very methodical and being very careful. You're doing a herringbone, they needed a bunch of just horizontal ones put on, they did a herringbone again over it. Yes, I was making sure I had his shoulders supported. I was making sure I was getting up to his armhole. Your weak points on your mold are where you have your seams. And yeah. your seam is down the back, on your shoulders, and on your neck hole. These are going to be holes that we were going to have to cover. And I didn't want those exploding, so I gave them as much structure as I could. After about 45 minutes, there's a really thick layer of paper tape all over Thorkules. We made sure he had a chair to lean on and kept checking that he didn't lock up his knees. It sounds easy, but it's actually not to just stand there the whole time while you're getting wrapped. And now that he was covered, Felicia added some alignment marks down his back. These will help guide her to put the seam back together correctly. It's not as easy as you think, putting the seam back together without having the person inside. The tape is sticking really well, but it's still wet enough we can cut it and the cast can still flex a little. One thing we did before we started, we added a strip of cardboard between the plastic bag and his clothes. So when we cut him out of the mold, the scissors weren't going up against his clothing, it wasn't going up against his skin, it was hitting the cardboard strip, and we followed that to safety. We set the wet form outside, setting it in such a way that it wouldn't dry crooked. It needs to dry at least 24 hours, I would suggest, because it set up like cardboard. After he was free, he got a chance to stretch his legs. Then we made some basic measurements of his arms, neck, and waist. She also made a paper pattern of his full neck, I can use that to make a neck shape from foam later. We made cardboard cutouts of roughly the right size and shape. Then we taped those into the openings that were left, and we used strapping tape. Which is the shipping tape that has the, the fiberglass string reinforcements yes. in it. Do not use any other tape than strapping tape. Okay. Because it will explode. And not explode like pyrotechnics, but plain packing tape will stretch under the pressure of the expanding foam, and the seams will pop open and leak. After it dried, we cut out most of the loose plastic from the inside and taped down all the loose edges. We wanted to reduce the amount of extra plastic bag that gets stuck inside the foam when it expands. Felicia started cutting strips of packing tape and sealed the neck and arm holes with the cardboard plugs. The plugs are just a close fit. Tape is what actually sealed the gaps to keep the foam from leaking. Then she started to close the seam that we cut on the back. Some tape was also placed inside and she made sure all the alignment marks went together. With all the seams sealed up, we set the form into a box that had a hole cut to fit his waist. We made a nice shape just for the base so that as it was expanding, it wasn't going to give us a circle because you're kind of more this shape than circular. The sides held the mold in place and it was big enough we could easily fit it around the mold. I would say it's necessary just because this has the potential of deforming and this just kind of is our last stop. Set the mold into a box, mix up some expanding foam, and pour. We're using a two-part foam that you need to mix. It expands more than the stuff in a spray can, and it sets up by chemical reaction. So foam this thick will actually be solid. The spray can foam needs to be exposed to the air to set up. So if you have this much in one place, it'll shrink long before it dries out and sets up. After the foam sets up and cooled down, we can start tearing open the form. 
We just needed to remove the cardboard shell and peel off as much plastic as we could. What is interesting is that even with all the layers of tape and with careful planning, the form is still a little bigger than his actual measurements. The form looks like it's holding its breath. That's kind of the size that it has. A little sanding is normal to get the form back down to what the correct size of the measurements are. Then Felicia made a spandex cover from some fabric left over from a mermaid tail she made for Beyond Geek. And I used the paper neck pattern to make a foam neck that could be held in place with T-pins. Now this may feel like a lot of work in order to get a dress form, but this is custom fit, specifically for Thorcules, and it's gonna last for years. This thing is solid, you can lean on it, right? Uh, Felicia has one that goes from her shoulders to her ankles. It's a dress form that she's been using for well over 10 years. Now, there are other ways that you could make a dress form. You could always wrap yourself with plastic wrap and duct tape, draw out your pattern, and then make one out of hollow EVA, and that'll work just fine. But this, I can lean on it, I can pin to it. It'll support a ton of weight while I'm working with it. And if I really wanted to, I could take the fabric back off and sculpt clay directly onto it in order to cast custom monster parts. I want to say thank you to Felicia and Thorcules for helping me get a torso that I can use for making armor and other parts for a future video on Odin Makes. You ready to perform the extraction? Yes. Galpel. Um, surgical scissors. scissors. <laughs> I want to thank Agent Mario, Hofius, and all of my Patreon supporters. Your Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>